More than 50% of this city's population was born outside of Canada, making Toronto arguably the most multicultural metropolis in the world. Our country, as opposed to our neighbor to the south, has long perceived of itself not as a melting pot, but a toss salad, a cultural mosaic, if you will, a place where people can live together while retaining their unique identities, a place like a good tossed salad, where the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. This vision implanted in me since grade school was always one that was truer in theory than in practice. The oftentimes gruesome treatment of Canada's indigenous peoples, as we were recently so sadly reminded, betrays the notion of a country accepting of all its people's ways of life. Surely quotas, Christy Pitts and none is too many speak as well to the failure of the tossed salad to find room for our people. Nevertheless, this experiment in togetherness has become increasingly successful, even as within our community and others. Unfortunately, the uniqueness of their background has over the years and generations disappeared amidst the crushing force of assimilation. But sometimes, even today, the progress seems to stop, if not take a step backwards. More cynically, at times, the very idea of a sustainable, multicultural, liberal order is challenged. In these last few weeks, we seem to be moving in the wrong direction. Like all of you, I am deeply concerned about the instances of hate speech, harassment, and violence against Jews that has grown exponentially in this city, country, and beyond since the most recent flare up of violence in Israel and Gaza. I'm also sickened by some of the vitriol from members of our community, especially as shared on social media. When our community organizations rightfully put out press releases defending Israel's actions, I began wondering what I could do to help turn down the temperature locally. I wonder what I, as a congregational rabbi and past president of the Toronto Board of Rabbis, could do to ensure that the violence of the Middle East did not export itself here. I am a big believer in deep listening and multi-faith cooperation. With the assistance of our member of parliament, Yara Sachs, I reached out to the National Council of Canadian Muslims, an organization whose leadership I've met before and who I know abstained from, participa from participating in rallies during the recent Mideast violence because they knew that things would be said with which they would not want to be associated. Feelings were still too raw for any sort of public conversation, but it was important to lay the groundwork. I was in touch with them. And then four Muslims were murdered in London. Many rabbis, including myself, reached out to imams who we know and have worked with in the past to express our outrage and sadness. Everyone said and did the right things. It was a tragedy that also opened the doors for Canadians from all walks of life to come together in solidarity. Everyone said and did the right things until the very last speaker at the London vigil. In 30 seconds, he managed to destroy what took long to build. Imam Munir El Qasem of the Islamic Center of Southwest Ontario, stated before the crowd of thousands, quote, whatever is happening in Jerusalem and Gaza is related to whatever happened in London, Ontario, period. And with that, the vigil ended, as did the support and solidarity of much of the Jewish community. The story was no longer, how do we continue to work side by side? It was no longer people of different faiths coming together for the common good. Rather, the story is now about the highly offensive insinuation that Israel or Jews are in some way responsible for what happened in London. The narrative has shifted from where it should be, that someone down the 401 from here was so unconscionably hateful 
that he intentionally ran over a Muslim family out for a stroll, murdering four and seriously injuring another. Imam al Qasim destroyed a moment of grief and communal togetherness. Sadly, in so doing, he desecrated the memories of the family killed. Since that speech, the Imam has wavered. He removed the video from his Facebook page while giving a nonsensical statement accusing everyone of misinterpreting his words. To date, the vigil organizers have not commented. In the opening of a Parsha, as the rebellion led by Korah and joined by many other Levites begins, Moses states, Rav Lachem b'nei Levi. In our translation, these words come out as, you have gone too far, sons of Levi. In this rendering, Moses is saying to the Levites that there is room to air grievances and to challenge the status quo. Their rebellion, however, has crossed a line. Their actions, having gone too far, cannot be tolerated. The traditional commentators, however, do not have consensus on the meaning of Rav Lachem. Rather than going too far, some suggest a similar though different translation. They understand Rav Lachem as meaning that Korach and his cronies are being greedy. Moses is telling them that as Levites, they already have so many privileges. Your desire for the leadership, Moses says, is nothing but selfishness. It is not about you. Others, though, say that through their words and actions, they have placed a great weight, a great responsibility upon themselves as they rebel against God. It will be a heavy load that might ultimately cause their downfall if not handled correctly. Rav Lecha, Imam El Qasim. To Imam El Qasim, I say, you have gone too far. There are times and spaces to share your political opinions as misguided as they might be. A vigil to mourn the lives of a family murdered by a hate-filled racist is not that place. Rav Lecha Imam El Qasim, you were greedy, selfish in sharing your conspiratorial thoughts, thereby taking away focus from the tragedy and the goodwill of the Jewish community. Rav Lecha Imam El Qasim, You've now taken upon yourself a great responsibility, a heavy weight in your rebellion. I pray that you do the right thing. Take back your hateful words and do tshuva. I pray that your words do not derail the good work of so many. What now for me? What now for those in our community who want to move forward in dialogue and build this city? help create a society that's not only tolerant, but indeed embracing of difference. I have to say that even more than the Imam's words, it was the cheering of the crowd that followed that seriously disheartened me. It is with that feeling of dejection that we return to the Parsha. Following the failed rebellion, the Israelites are despondent. They have seen much devastation. Gavadnu, avadnu kulanu avadnu, they say. We are lost. We have perished. All of us perished. They see no way forward. They, accept, they have accepted as fact that they'll perish in the wilderness. Their future is determined, and there's nothing, nothing they can think that they can do to change it. Those listening closely to the Israelites' words may hear the distant echo of Queen Esther. She too speaks of being lost, just like the Israelites repeating the word root avad, aleph, vet, dalet. After the decree to kill the Jews goes out, Esther says, go assemble all the Jews who live in Shushan and fast on my behalf. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. Then I shall go to the king, though it is contrary to the law. And if I am to perish, I shall perish. Esther is open to the possibility of a tragic ending, but it is not for her an inevitability. 
Esther is willing to step up to the plate, recognizing that she may go down swinging. Unlike the Israelites in the wilderness, Esther, at least, is willing to try. Rabbi Tarfon teaches in Pirkei Avot, Lo alecha hamlacha ligmor, velo ata ben chorin lihibatel mimena. It is not your duty to complete the task, but neither are you at liberty to neglect it. I'm not Pollyannish enough to believe that a conversation, and then maybe another, and then maybe a group discussion, and then a program or two, is going to stop the violence in the Middle East. I'm not certain of the effect it will have locally either. But we, I, nevertheless, must give it a try. It is both the Jewish and Canadian thing to do.